Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Onepra Pavarian and we return here in Manalords to a beautiful, beautiful Haufendorf. So a rather irregularly built village that, while it does have central streets, is not really something that gives you, you know, similar sized plot sizes or even a lot of big plot sizes. It rather makes it so that you have a very, very unique shape. We're going to build this village up further and we're going to explore a little bit what we can do with it. Um, I already will tell you right now, this is my second recording of this video, entirely because I noticed something. So basically, here's something that you should definitely know if you want to build a fence around your entire village. If you do it like I did it here, where I first built the manor, then I drew up a theoretical plan inside of the castle builder for this particular fence right here. And then before I actually built the fence, I built these little houses and then you build the fence. If you do that, you can still click these houses because they essentially count as, well, placed later than the fence itself. Which is good because it means these houses right here can still be interacted with, they can be upgraded with, and so on. I found that I made a big mistake here because I just thought, well, basically, if I already have placed these houses, I can interact with them even if I fully fence them in. That is not the case. Basically, if I now build a manor here and then build a fence, all of these houses become completely non-interactive anymore. They still go after their business, they do their stuff and so on, but obviously that is not desired. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to build up this village and I'm going to probably off camera tear down every last building here after I build one manor and then rebuild those buildings so that that manor counts as build later and so on and so forth. The point being, even if we build the village fence, we should ch uh, still be able to interact with it. I really recommend taking this in. There is some jank required. Um, Listen, the least work-intensive method that you can do is just don't build any village fences. <laughs> you know, that is definitely something you can do. But if you do want it aesthetically, and by the way, I really like how this already looks right here, then make sure that you have essentially built the manor and planned the fence before you place down any of these buildings. I now have to do this manually. It will be all right, but it is a bit of a hassle. All right, and that leaves me now, of course, with one step right here, and that is placing this manor. Let's place this manor, and let's just immediately commit. I'm not even going to do anything else. The idea for the manor is that it essentially overlooks this village. This village is in such a great spot, kind of by accident, because it is in this valley. If we take a look at this right here, you can see there is a valley coming from these three hills, and it just looks so good, because when you are actually here in the manor, you're not really elevated, but you are just elevated enough where, yes, you can see every single rooftop in the village. And then in the village, of course, you get this superb effect, I think, where essentially everything around you rises up slightly, meaning that in the center, everything looks a bit more impressive, even if there aren't that many buildings after all. Now, we are simply going to wait. Uh, we currently do not have any builders. Don't worry about it too much. A lot of people will be migrating here before I start tearing out their buildings and then replacing, uh, replacing them, but that'll be all right. Let's take a look at what we can do farm-wise. I am thinking that I want pretty big farms right here, uh, primarily, because essentially, I want to just feed this region. We can probably import a lot of food here as well, because this will be, like I said, a rather rich region. Uh, the Dorf's Etter will run roughly here. Now, I could place a field in there, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to instead go with housing. Uh, what we're going to do here is, I think, just place something along the road. Let's hope. Oh, what did I do there? Let's place something along the road. Boom, there you go. That shouldn't be too difficult. Where do we put the farmhouse? I mean... Ooh, that's a good question. Um, where do we put it? I'm going to just put it right here. It is a nice entry point into town. At least I would argue so myself. And then we're just going to... Can I Can I do that? Can I overbuild this ceramics? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's convenient. All right, let's overbuild this ceramics thing. We don't really care for it anyway. And then I'm just looking at this, actually. Um, we're going to have, I think, two fields here. One that is somewhat long at the very least. And then a path in between. The point here being that we want to make it into this direction over here because this direction is, of course, where the other green spot on this particular section of the map is, which means we want to exploit it. There you go. And that should basically make it so that we can easily reach it. I'm going to put one field right here. How big are you going to be? One Morgan. That's essentially perfect. I'm just going to make sure that we actually capture the entire green spot. Uh, the idea here being... We will not have too many fields, but we will have just enough to actually make this work. And here as well, we will now connect this road and we will make it so that even if it is suboptimal, I will have a bit of a field right here. We are going to fence all of them in and we are going to put the sheep on these, uh, hopefully making it so that we can run this all year round. Uh, we also do need a windmill, of course, and I am thinking... 
I think I'm going to place this windmill basically facing the town at the 100% level right here. That should look great. Um, my hope here being indeed it is close enough to town that, you know, any communal oven that we might build, you know, benefits from it. While at the same time, just looking good. I mean, look at that. Now, the good news is no matter what we do, we don't actually need to produce everything here because we can very, very easily and quite cheaply actually export stuff that, you know, I think is going to print money. I'm going to place in actual and I'm going to place two bloomeries right here. These two bloomeries. Oh, did I? OK, I got to move this one slightly. My bad. These two bloomeries will then be responsible with basically taking whatever comes out of the mining pit right here and turning it into pure money. And um, we can, if I'm not mistaken. So if we just sell iron ore, we can get four bucks out of it. If we sell basically what they're producing right here. So these, uh, I believe they're called slabs in game, iron slabs. Uh, if we are selling those, we are making six bucks per unit. And that means we can essentially make six bucks every time we get one iron ore out of here. Yes, we have to, of course, manufacture it, but that doesn't really cost us any money. So we should be golden. Uh, what we're going to do, and I think this is fine if I build it already because this will be outside of the oats etter. I am going to go on and build, uh, I think we're actually going to go pretty far here and build two trading posts. Yes, we want to be pretty damn active because with these trading posts, I will then simply exclusively sell these iron slabs, hopefully making so much money that whether it is food, whether it is resources that I need to build stuff, I can simply purchase it. We have played very, very little in this particular playthrough with trade and with just money making. I think we're going to do more of that going forward entirely because I would like to have a little, you know, iron town going on in the upcoming playthrough. But we'll see about it. I just think in general that there is a lot to be said about the value of trade and I want to explore this a bit more. I have basically not done it at all. This right here has been you know, very much left alone by me. And then these over here with the wax, for example, as well. I'm excited to find out whether these are actually good. I mean, honestly, you could run either an iron economy, you could run a hide economy. I don't really think wax is viable entirely because you can only build two beekeepers per region. It's just not that much. But yeah, those are some interesting specializations. And you know what? While we're here, um, I'm going to purchase both of these regions entirely because I'm pretty sure if I purchase them, the bandits will stop spawning here. And my god, stop spawning here, you are very annoying. Uh, I'm gonna send in my retinue, and that retinue is hopefully gonna make short work of them. I would be surprised if it didn't. We, we just gotta get rid of them. It is time for you to stop pestering me. There you go, I have claimed both of these territories. Like I said, this should lead to bandits no longer showing up. It might also lead, however, to this fella attacking us. So in the game mode that we're currently in, he won't attack us unless all territories have been claimed, which has now been done. But you know what? I think we are ready. If he attacks us, so be it. All right, and there you go. We have built this manor. Now, the next step, at least if I'm correct, what we want to do here is we want to already essentially place the Dorf Etter. So the Dorf Etter, just if you weren't aware, is essentially a village fortification. Not comparable really to a wall because it is significantly smaller. However, it is big enough to keep, you know, open bandits, to keep, for example, bears, you know, other animals and such out of the village. And that is, of course, incredibly important to the inhabitants here. It also does a couple of other things, like making sure that you actually have your own legal system, you know, indifferent to whatever your lord wants to do. But you know what? That is a bit of a different story. We're going to get to that when the Etta is actually built in the hope that the Etta will actually be built. What we're going to do here is we're going to drag it out pretty generously because the idea is just that I will be building some houses in these locations. I'm going to drag you like this uh, and then I actually have to test this. I'm going to test this with a save game. Don't worry about the details there too much. Basically, I need to find out whether I am even right in the first place. I think if I plan this now... There you go. Boom. We're going to commit this. It's not really committed, but look at that. Yeah, this looks fine. This is pretty round. We're looking pretty okay here, I think. And then if we close this, if I now build a new building inside of this location, if I actually give the command to build the Dorf Etter, I'm pretty sure that building will then actually still be interactable. That is the whole point here, right? So the base idea is if I build the Etter right now, none of these buildings could be interacted with. If I rebuild all these buildings now that I have already placed the Etter, it should be in a position where basically I can still interact with them afterwards. We'll see whether it works. 
And oh my god, thank god, I thought I was doing all of this for naught, but I wasn't. So I just tested this and this is a really great result because it is reproducible. And if you want to, you know, kind of customize what your village looks like, this is definitely something to consider. I tore down, and I kid you not, every last building that you can see right here and rebuilt it. It was a huge pain. Now the result is that even if I am building the manor wall as I initiated it right here, we're not actually going to do this, don't worry about this, I still have some other stuff to build right here. But anyway, the point is that if you have done everything that I said, where you place the wall in the editor already and then build these things, you will be in a position where you can still click them. Oh, this makes it so that I can essentially frame this entire village inside of a wall and still interact with it afterwards. That is absolutely great. Um, Let's roll this back. So here we are now. We are back. This is from before I initiate actually building it. You can see right here the entire wall is drawn. And now it is time that we fill out this entire city before we actually place the wall down. After that, we can still interact with all of these buildings, which means I can upgrade them, I can give them certain professions, backyards improvements, and so on. However, I will not be able to build more. So that means we want to go pretty hard on this right now, I wager. Now, I was looking at this, by the way, and I'm thinking um, we're actually going to make this into like a really big, a big crossing right here. My reasoning is that this is effectively the road directly to the manor. And you can see right here, why wouldn't it go up there? I have noticed that time and time again, my citizens indeed actually want to get there very quickly, but have to take this path. So instead, I will put in another path right there. And then with that, oh my God, we can finally start building properly. Now that is what I am talking about. All right, so we are essentially going to place down buildings like this. I think buildings facing the street right here. Actually, you know what? Let's maybe do this half and half essentially yeah that looks perfect to me we are going to have buildings facing the street this is a pretty central location and then the rest will essentially be staring down right here boom there you go that will indeed of course be a central street right here in town I'm going to make these uh, relatively big actually when it comes to the size of the plots here then over here i was thinking so if we take a look at the castle planner you will see that indeed all of this right here is actually inside of our walls. And this is a really, really big deal because it means I can turn this into the Almende. The Almende, of course, was a space as well in these type of towns right here. Uh, it could be much like, you know, it is maybe for other types of towns far away from town as well. It could be like right over here, so outside of the uh, Dorf Etter. Uh, but we're going to put it, of course, inside. Let me take a look at this. I think this should be okay. Oh, I, I hate this. Okay, wait a minute. Let me redraw this path right here. Okay, there you go. That is what I like to see. Anyway, let's build this Almende. We're going to turn this effectively into a pasture. I think this should be okay, right? I will have to, just for the record, compare this every now and again. This is something that you can't skip with the actual castle planner right here. I am going to change this lightly here. <laughs> I am going to change this very lightly indeed. Yeah, that is better. I will definitely take this. There you go. So now we have the Almende. And now whenever you build something, you have to just roughly keep in mind where exactly do you need to be. I don't even want to build these buildings that far back. But essentially, you have to sometimes remember, okay, we're going to go ahead and build this right here like so. Don't push it too far. Because if you do, you will be inside of the walls and that would, of course, be quite detrimental. We are going to build pretty sizable honestly buildings right here uh, i'm going to make these into pretty big yards because well they will effective uh, effectively be you know not the city center so i think we will be doing fine right there again let me double check this it's a bit tedious but i think the results are going to be worth it yeah that looks ideal all right folks and i think we have reached the moment of truth i am now going to go ahead if i have the resources and i do and give this the get-go. Let's take a look at this, right? We are nowhere... Okay, um, I'm going to get rid of this building. Don't worry about it too much. We're going to rebuild that fairly quickly. The rest looks perfectly fine to me. Yes, okay. We're going to get rid of that, and then we will initiate building the fence. Now, make no mistake, and I want to be very, very outspoken here. I believe it is going to take half an eternity for this thing to be built. So, you know, hey, let's sit down... <laughs> Hope that it doesn't take too long, uh, and I'll see you after that. Uh, it might, yeah, again, it, it might cost me some nerve, but I think we'll be fine. I think this building here is fine as well. We can leave some empty space right there. That's completely acceptable. 
Let's get this bread. This will be the biggest and the longest building project I think that we have ever had. Uh, they seem to struggle with building these kind of fences. It just takes them ages. Obviously, they also need to transport a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff over there, but yeah, listen, we'll see. Let's just hope that this does finish eventually. The biggest thing, as always, is that I can click every last burgage plot because of what I've done here. Man, this is some cheese, some jank that you definitely will want to be aware of. You can see, for example, I did not build this. So this already was here before I built the manor. And because of that, I cannot click it. Now, luckily, I have employed all the people I want employed in it, and I've upgraded it fully. So this is fine. Everything else, though, take a look at that. We can do whatever we want with it. Beautiful. We have now delivered a essentially every transported good but now begins the long long building period and I truly mean this so you can see we already have our pathways here for these streets but beyond that effectively nothing and that is exactly the way this is going to go <laughs> I wish it weren't so okay but the reality is since I have already built this once and I ended up with a fact where I can't actually click any of these I know how long this takes. This may very well take three goddamn winters. I wish it weren't so, but here we are. Okay, we just gotta be patient. Uh, the wall, there it is, will spring forth and eventually also finish. But yeah, it might take some time. Now, of course, what we can do in that time, at least I would argue we can, is upgrade these locations right here. We are earning money and with earning money here, of course, I am also going on and actually, for example, building some chicken coops. I want to, of course, be self-sufficient. The chicken coops, I think, are our best bets in general. Other than that, though, uh, let's just go ahead and upgrade these to level two. It's not a big upgrade, but it is an upgrade. And, well, you know, why wouldn't we do it? Me doing this right here should also not actually hamper the fence building because this requires an ox, whereas, you know, the fence does not really do that anymore. We've already brought all of our requirements right there. It just requires people to continuously walk up to, for example, these pass-throughs right here or the manor itself to build things. You can see we are progressing, but... Yeah, it is not fast. Yeah, and there you go. We have just finished building these and immediately get a new development point. We can, of course, level this settlement up quickly. You know, if, in fact, we are in a position where all of our needs are fulfilled. Uh, this will be difficult for level 3, but I think we're doing fine so far. Look at that. This is a site build. I really love the valley of this particular settlement. And now as we walk through here, you can also see that I really emphasize the major road right there. Yes, we have this one that goes into the, you know, towards the King's Road. But this one is so important because it leads directly up to the manor. And this just looks so good. I really, really like how this city is coming along. Again, it's going to take us quite some time to finish <laughs> to finish this accursed, accursed uh, fence right here. But it will be quite something, I think. Uh, I really like the fact that we can build this. Yes, it requires jank, but it does make it so that this is a different community from both the Rundling and, of course, the Angerdorf and Straßendorf that we have built. This one will be a lot more self-contained and self-sufficient indeed. Now, as for our point, I'm obviously going to pick up deep mining. We have already mined quite a bit. Well, you know, still 1,000 left. That is fine. Once we have the wealth, I'm going to go ahead, put this into a deep mining environment, and then we can go from there. As we go, I will also pump more and more people in here because, yes, this has been printing money for us. Don't mistake that at any point to not be the case just because I'm low on money. I'm just spending it all the time. Being able to just sell these slabs here is huge and the longer we go the more of course will i take care to actually employ people here i think the trading post us having two here will be very beneficial once we buy and sell even more so that we definitely have enough people coming and going and now let me just see so i heard from the developer and from somebody on the subreddit that if i export shoes right here right we're gonna limit this let's say they need 100 whatever now supposedly they can indeed be purchased by this region right here um, I need some more money and then I'm going to do this. The shoes would be hugely beneficial for us because then, of course, we could satisfy the clothing stall supply right here without me needing to do anything. Other, if it doesn't work, I will indeed just on this pasture, you know, have some sheep running around. Classic stuff, I would say. But yeah, it's an interesting question. It's a question that I haven't tried. Supposedly, the pack station, like we set it up and let me just... Oh, we were right there. Like we set it up right here in Lehmdorf. Supposedly, that isn't actually meant for villages. That is exclusively meant for outposts, which means... This bartering here shouldn't be the primary thing of us doing, uh, well, you know, effectively anything. My hope here is that uh, I can understand the trade system a little bit better. It's a bit obfuscate if you ask me, because whenever I actually 
watch these trading posts, they either have a merchant come in or they, you know, for example, go right here into the outside trade point. I would expect that if I sell shoes right here and I buy shoes up there, that a merchant travels up there and basically money is exchanged between this region and that region rather than into a merchant and then out of a merchant, which leaves me with a loss because, of course, such a big difference in price there between import and export. But anyway, we will find out and, well, it will be interesting to know whether trade works the way I think it works now or whether I'm just wrong about it. And we already unlocked yet another point. I'm going to go here with basic armor making. We're just going to start pushing this. Uh, let me double check this. I don't think the armor is actually something that could make us a lot of money, right? Let's let's just be sure here. Uh, so for one slab, you get six bucks. Six bucks. Uh, four bucks, actually. My bad. Okay. Uh, helmets. You get six bucks. And I think they need... That's a good question. Do they need one or two? Uh, let me transform this burger spot right here into an armor maker. There you go. Uh, let's build it up and let's see whether indeed this would make us more money. But it seems like such a long process. It seems too elaborate. And look at, wow, look at the fence. It's actually coming along nicely. Much faster than I anticipated. All right, let's check out this armorer's shop. I think it is this building right here. Uh, I assume it will just have the very same setup as the as the blacksmith. I mean, there's not really an, an, you know, an intrinsic difference in the usage and the materials that are, of course, being utilized. Yeah, it's the exact same setup. That makes perfect sense. What can we do with you? General, right? You are producing these. You use one iron slab. Oh, okay. So this does absolutely produce more value than, you know, if we didn't have it. So technically, if we stopped selling the slabs and started selling only this, we would be making more money. But I mean, I'm going to just let this armorer's shop produce a little bit right now. We're going to see what the workflow is, how fast they are and so on. I would argue, though, in general, um, I'm going to make this entire region, like this entire area here, just armorer's workshop. So like, yeah, these these three are going to be armorer's workshops. And then over here, we're going to have other stuff eventually. But for the time being, basically, we want to ramp up production right there. What is the next requirement, by the way? Level 3. Right, only then do we get the new perks. For that, we need to upgrade the church. We need more clothing, which the shoes might be able to do. We'll see. And we need tavern supply. And that one, yeah, that's a doozy. Because we are not really in a position where I can produce any of the barley myself. It's just horrendous here. We have to import that. Uh, we'll see about that. Regions. Let me put down a livestock trading post right about... Yeah, right about here. This should be golden. I have read this text. Enables trading livestock with trade points and other settled regions. I'm not sure I'm in agreement with that text either. I, I don't mean to say that it doesn't work that way. It's just that I haven't observed it working that way. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build that one. And I'm going to set this up to export and set that one up to import. And then we're going to observe where the traders go. Do they go to the trade points spending my money or... Do they just walk to the other town, pick up a sheep? Maybe don't even pay anything because they are my sheep. Uh, and then go back to town. We shall see. It's an interesting question either way because, well, it hasn't worked for me so far. But, hey, it supposedly does. Oh, and that is not good. We have a drought. I didn't realize this. I think we only had it once in this playthrough so far. But this is what a drought looks like. And, I mean, yeah, these are terrible conditions uh, this is not looking good for us at all i hope that we are not confronted with starvation right now we are holding strong and i mean yeah our bread basket here is just making infinite food how is lehmdorf doing though i wonder lehmdorf is doing okay you know what i hope that we can just well basically power through this but yeah it isn't gonna be good for our uh, for our harvest here yeah there seem to be some pathfinding issues because we are building this big fence. they're just standing there then one every now and again starts building and then <laughs> Then they just stand there for another while, another person will start building and so on. Listen, as long as you're getting it done eventually, take a look at that. The fence is progressing. As long as that is happening, I am happy. And oh my god, it has actually been done. Look at that beautiful, beautiful fence. And you can now see we are upgrading everything. It's actually working. They were basically blocked here. Whenever they hit this wall, they would be like, where was I supposed to go? Oh, right, I needed to go there. Except they took like five minutes to think about that. Anyway, of course, this was a very complex and unintended operation. You're not meant to build these fences. But here we are. Lo and behold, we have built this beautiful, beautiful fence town. And this is so interesting 
because in the historical context, of course, this had a big, big meaning. From our fortification up here where we sit, where our manor is, our main manor, I should say, let's take a quick gander down here. Let's see what is going on there. I really do like, by the way, whenever we have these obstructions right here of sight. Oh, look at that. You can see it in the distance, both the both the wall and indeed, of course, also the actual village. Now, this is an important, important thing. And like I said, this was emblematic as well. These are closed, clo uh, these are called closed villages. So they're Haufen Dörfer that are closed villages because at some point or another, they got some level of fence. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. First of all, this fence is not exactly what they built historically. There may have very well been some cases of this. And I do like that we can't see the... Uh, log industry over there. I will move this anyway. I don't like it at this main road over there. I just have it there for convenience. Don't worry about it too much. I love the mill. But essentially, what we have right here, this fence is not really historically accurate. It was an even smaller fence for these type of villages. Think about it this way. To build a proper wall, so a wall wall, which goes even a bit further than this, I'm talking about, you know, tree logs, for example, erected next to each other, that kind of stuff, you need to be pretty rich. Now, villages, on average, no matter what they did, weren't pretty rich. They, they just weren't in that position where they could afford something like this, and they didn't. Before we head in, by the way, I just want to take a quick look here at the at this stuff over there. I love the way this village looks. It looks so protected. It clearly has a focus. It has the center there of the church and the marketplace, but it itself is indeed still quite erratic in its building's form. Anyway, what we have right here is the uh, village stuff. So here, rather, sorry, the farming stuff. We have the mill, we got the farmhouse, we have uh, plenty, plenty of, you know, farming space, although it is all quite bad. And then all the way over there, you can't even see it from here. That is where I will have the sheep farm and where I will have the weaver and so on. And we will, of course, uh, try to make that work. Anyway, I had to teleport us into the fortifications. You can pass through this in third person right now. You can see the mill so you know roughly where we are. My point is that this fence even is too big. A small village, a poor village, or even a rich village that isn't yet a city wouldn't necessarily be building something like this. Rather, they would indeed simply limit, you know, their village limitations exactly with this. This small variation of a fence, maybe sometimes bigger, maybe sometimes smaller, maybe sometimes it was just a hedge, would essentially delineate where the village starts and where it ends. This did have practical purposes, and I, I really love how this all is falling into each other here. This is really, really pretty. It had practical implications, like for example, keeping out wild animals, keeping your animals in, ensuring that it is clear where, of course, the limitations of what is owned and what is not owned are running. All that kind of stuff, these are practical limitations. They could even, you know, be a benefit against bandits, not against an armed assault, but again, against thieves, you know, that kind of stuff. It would be quite easy to limit exactly where you need to protect and where you are golden. Now, that aside, we have a bit of a bigger fence right here. Shouldn't be a hurdle for the enjoyment of this fence. There you go. What is the, well, kind of indirect benefit of this? When you're building an etter like this, it would also, in virtually all cases, mean that you would now have your very own jurisdiction. This was its own legal territory. I've talked about this in the past. There would be somebody, you know, coming to the villages, speaking justice. If they couldn't facilitate speaking justice on their own, building a dorf etter, an orts etter, would essentially mean that, yes, we are in charge ourselves. This is the very first stage towards fighting for your right to become a city. This is something that we are also not fully aware, but, for example, many cities... Sorry for the interruption there. A helmet just arrived at my address. <laughs> anyway, let's talk before I get back to the helmet and just play around with that for a little bit here on my own time. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the rights of a city, right? Obviously, we talked about it in the past as well, the difference between a free man and a serf and how people would always attempt to preserve their freeman status. Now, cities actually had a particular saying there. First, the village would do what it could to have a dwarf etter, like we have it right here, and then if it ever developed into a proper city, well, there was a lot of privilege to be had there because you have to understand the following. There was basically a legal principle that developed over the period of the medieval, uh, you know, uh, age here in Germany in particular, where if you were an unfree person, so you are not somebody that is free, you're a serf, if you spent one year and one day in a city, you will become free. It will no longer be justified that your lord can recollect you, that, you know, he can demand that you return to your field and so on and so forth. 
this kind of privilege, this kind of freedom is absolutely massive. And that is something that people would fight for. If I had to define this village right here, I would say that different from the Angerdorf that stands directly in the uh, kind of hegemony relationship with the Manor Lord, this city ultimately would try to get more and more privileges and become an independent hub. First, they have secured their own jurisdiction right here via the Dorf Etter in the future. If an unfree from a different area flees right here, they will indeed gain freedom within a year. That is exactly what this signifies. And that is why it was so important for me to build this Dorf Etter right here. This village in its nature is built like an old core German village, making it so that, yeah, indeed, it has a much stronger relationship with the Lord rather than newly settled territory. A relationship where the village right here wants to defend its rights, its inhabitants and anybody that might become it. I will tell you, this looks absolutely beautiful to me. I really like that when you go through these, you know, roads of the city, you can always see something new. You turn the corner and maybe the path doesn't exactly go as you want it, but it is a pretty, pretty, you know, I, I would say almost optimal setup, right? We have this direct path through the city. We have this direct path and then we have the surrounding paths right there. So this right here is now a special case. I really like how it came out and... We're going to build this up in the next video. I think that might actually be the last one when we are trying to push this village to have level 3 housing. We're not that far away already. And once we have that, we are going to build an army army and then march towards our enemy and wipe him out completely. He only has three territories left after all. Folks, I will, however, leave you right here with our beautifully and hard-earned in a walled city right here. Ah, yeah, things are really, really coming together.